thank you very much for inviting me today. Um, such an inspiring morning already. Um, visionary, large scale. Um, I am coming at it today from a slightly different angle because I've heard a lot of, you know, high level um, today. But actually, I'm going to be talking a bit more about community at a grassroots level and the people behind these partnerships and the people behind making parks the places that they want to be in. Um, oh, let me just get to my slide. So a little bit about us, first of all. Um, Historic Coventry Trust, we're a small entrepreneurial charity, um, a team of just eight people based in Coventry. Um, and actually, we were born out of community action. Around 11 years ago, um, Coventry City Council um, tried, um, only a, very briefly, um, to sell Charterhouse um, as one of its properties. I think it might have been one of those you know, going for a pound. And the community around Charterhouse, which um, is an amazing building, started life as a Cartesian monastery. For those of you that don't know Coventry or do know it, it's just off London Road, is one of Coventry's um, best kept secrets. And the community basically rose up and said, there's absolutely no way you can sell this. This is ours. Look in Colonel Wiley's will. And 80 years previous, um, one of the last owners of Charterhouse, Colonel Wiley, had left it to the people of Coventry for it to be a place of um, enjoyment, a museum and culture. Um, at that point, we were established and obviously um, raised, began to raise the funds um, to bring, bring this property back into, back into public life. Um, and I share this point because at this point, I think it's where we did something differently in our partnership. Um, our very visionary um, chairman, Ian Harabin, who has a background in development, worked closely with the City Council and our Board of Trustees um, to land a groundbreaking um, partnership with Coventry City Council in which actually more, not less, properties um, were given to us to help us sustain Charterhouse into the longer-term future. Um, so now we have... Um, 22 properties, in fact, although, you know, not all of those are currently um, live and back in public use. Um, but, of course, um, they're really varied uh, in terms of how we're bringing them back. So you can see here um, Coventry City Gates, which have been restored and brought back as um, bespoke and luxury holiday accommodation for the city. Um, you can see here chapels, including the Anglican Chapel and Nonconformist Chapel, set within Joseph Paxton's Arboretum, um, part of London Road Cemetery, and Charterhouse there in the middle. Uh, we also have a row of re retail shops on the Burgess um, in the city centre, which have been restored, and um, Draper's Hall. In fact, Draper's Hall has its first birthday this evening as Coventry's new music venue. Um, but of course, we're more than just buildings. Um, I wanted to share a little bit more about um, the Anglican Chapel. I think one of, the, one of the things which is important and quite challenging, actually, about Historic Coventry Trust is we have so many partnerships at so many levels right across the city. Um, we, we, are, we are managing to, to maintain those well uh, and do extraordinary things with our partners. Um, but every single relationship is different. In the situation of the Anglican Chapel and London Road Cemetery, we have a relationship with Coventry City Council whereby they manage the overall landscape of um, London Road Cemetery, which is a beautiful, one of the first municipal cemeteries in the UK. Um, however, we manage the properties in those spaces and indeed animate those as community hubs with a whole range of activities um, and events for the public to enjoy. Uh, we've been very, very lucky in Coventry, as many of you will know, um, to have been crowned Coventry City of Culture over 2022 and some of 23, in which we had a, an enormous amount of in wood investment to really animate our park spaces. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, one, uh, one of that, that being a successful partnership. Um, Coventry City of Culture were able to commission um, lots of cultural content right across our spaces, but in particular um, worked with Marshmallow Laser Feast. I don't know if any of you in the room will be aware of them, but they're a digi digital company based in London, and they brought to us in, in to the cemetery a fully immersive experience which basically touched on all themes of green future, and in particular trees and the breath, as simple as the breath, and how an individual connects with nature. Um, 
And this was kind of groundbreaking in a way for us and really blurred the boundaries of what people expected in the cemetery. They would arrive, they were blindfolded, they were taken into the mortuary chapel, they would watch videos on walls, and then they were guided around the cemetery to stand under trees and listen to poetry um, and recordings. So it was a really, really beautiful experience, which we're now um, embracing the legacy of in the city. Uh, and here also another um, example, really, of storytelling and how we tell the stories and make our uh, stories in the cemetery relevant to young people. Um, on the bottom here, you can see an image of Luke Duram, and again, another artist, Luke Duram, uh, a Bristol-based artist. Um, some of you may have seen images on Facebook of his ginormous moon that often gets suspended in all kinds of places these days. Um, but he has this wonderful piece called Lullaby, um, in which we engaged over 150 people to decorate their lights. Uh, we worked in partnership with Arup to educate young people about how to build solar, uh, solar panels. Then they created lights for their own bicycles. Everyone collectively decorated them. Um, and then, first of all, we had um, a walk of respect through the cemetery, past the graves of the Starley family, who are well known and regarded as godfathers of bicycle invention in the cemetery. And then we reclaimed the streets. Uh, literally, we did not close roads, we just took them over. And basically, 150 people, children and families, um, convoyed through the streets of Coventry, uh, through the roads of Coventry, kind of um, taking a lullaby to people's doors. Ah, I should perhaps uh, also say that, of course, it was COVID at this time. Um, so people really welcomed having heart, art taken and culture taken to their door, to their doorstep. Uh, and then we convened back at the park afterwards. Oh, I've gone. Oh, <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and then I mentioned briefly before Charterhouse. Um, I did just want to touch again on that um, and the you know, talk about the broad range of partnerships um, involved in bringing this project to fruition. Um, Charterhouse was a Carthusian monastery. It will open pretty much as you find a National Trust property these days. It, it's, it has a pay barrier. It will have a fully interpreted exhibition, including of significant medieval and Elizabethan wall paintings throughout. Um, and you know, listening to the stats around um, retail and cafe and uh, food and beverage offer, ex ex for example, will definitely be taking advantage of all of those opportunities, um, including um, a new uh, fine dining restaurant as well attached to the property. Um, but you know, we're more than the buildings, um, and this this charter house amazing project is set in a much wider heritage park landscape. Um, so we have, we're right in a way at the beginning of the journey of working with our partners across nature and across the city to bring this space to life and make it available for all. Um, we're very grateful to work closely with Warwickshire Wildlife Trust. Um, one thing that we try and do wherever possible is maximise each other's pound. So as partners, we come together in the room and we, we join forces and put, put those boundaries in place around who's doing what, who's got money for what, to ensure that we really optimise and maximise the opportunity across the, across the park. So you can see here, hopefully from the map on the, uh, and also from the image, we have the River Sherbourne running through um, our site. Um, Warwickshire Wildlife Trust have just been successful with a National Lottery Heritage Fund grant to restore and bring to life the river um, over the next three years and animate that space, as well as obviously um, improve biodiversity along the river route and improve um, river water, etc. cetera. Um, hopefully you can see here as well how close um, Paxton's Arboretum is to Charterhouse, just across the road, um, London Road running through the map. I need my pointer. Um, but you can see it's a, it's a whole holistic heritage offer um, right, across, uh, right across London Road there that we're promoting. Uh, we also have um, the Loop Line as well, which is a new two-mile cycling and walking route from the Heritage Park up to Gosford Green in the top right-hand corner there. So we're really thinking about connectivity um, across the city, and that means we're working holistically, you know, with Sustrans, with British Cycling, with Warwickshire Wildlife Trust, with many, many partners across different sectors um, to bring this part, to bring this um, project to fruition. Um, and I said right at the beginning of the presentation uh, that people really are at the heart of everything that we do. I wanted to touch a little bit about the practicalities of working in partnership um, with an, a range of partners within our volunteering programme. 
realistically for us to have place keepers, um, what we're aiming to do is really inspire and engage people in as many different places as we possibly can in our landscape directly. Um, we have at the moment 150 volunteers as part of our volunteering program. I would say around 40 of those are very active with us as part of our nature team. They're working with us on a weekly basis, sometimes in the walled garden at Charterhouse, sometimes within the community orchard, other times alongside the river with Warwickshire Wildlife Trust, other times up, uh, other times up on the loop line. Um, but one thing that we're always trying to do is engage them at every single point in the journey. So, for example, when we are um, doing some landscape management or we are having um, surveys conducted, you will, you will find our friends groups and our local residents who have uh, an active interest in, na in nature attending those alongside us and with us, um, as well as being at the consultation events, as well as being at the update events, as well as being part of those training sessions. We're constantly trying to bring people along with us on that journey, being as inclusive as, as possible uh, as we go along. Yeah, and there you can see yeah, a trampoline being taken out of the old allotments on the Charterhouse site. There's something very uh, rewarding. for the, uh, What we're finding is people just love this work. Um, and it's been incredible to see how many corporate um, away days we've been able to attract into our volunteering programme. So at the moment, we work with Seven Trent Water, Coventry Building Society, Cadent Gas on a regular basis, all sending teams to us as much as twice a month um, to help us maintain our landscape, keep on top of it. Sometimes it's general litter picking stuff. Sometimes it's, you know, cutting back landscape management. And what we're finding here is that's a real appetite for more resource for these groups, for training of these groups. And actually, we are finding, identifying many park rangers um, in our volunteer team that just need the tools and the training um, because the ambition and the um, desire to be part of you know, then, then maintaining the landscape is there. Um, so that's where we're about to start making some investment. Um, here you can see our Heritage Park Times newspaper as well. I just wanted to touch um, based briefly on marketing and reaching as many people as possible and as broadly as possible. Whilst we have really active friends groups amongst our parks, um, sometimes those groups are um, waning, reducing in number because perhaps they've been going a long time, perhaps the age of the leaders, of, uh, you know, perhaps they're, they're changing um, how they're running things. So one of the things that we're always trying to do is reach out to everybody, in particular those that are right on our doorstep or within walking and cycling to us. Um, so last year for the first time we did a door drop of 4,000 newspapers directly through people's homes. It was jam-packed full of um, articles about nature, um, involve articles written by and um, folk, um, kind of pr profiling individuals uh, in those neighbourhoods. You know, prime example, Les Ward is out there every day with his camera um, taking snaps of the 50 species of birds he's been discovering in the last year. You know, he gets to use the newspaper as a gallery. Um, as much as possible, we're trying to engage people and, and give them an opportunity to share their enjoyment of nature through everything that we do. We also have our large scale events as well, festivals, um, you know, all the typical stuff like that that you might um, find. Our partners all invited to come and have a stand, um, seed bombs, you know, all of the hands on um, engaging families in physical action they can take to improve biodiversity in nature in their local area. Um, so Alison did ask me to speak more specifically about partnerships. So I did just want to share um, a little bit about how we go about that. Um, you know, we don't always get it right. And what's for sure uh, is that I really concur with what Nick was saying about, you know, everything being constantly evolving and us needing to adapt to that and be adaptable. Uh, what we're finding is that we need to as long as that everybody has that shared goal um, at the end, um, we're able to take people on a journey with us. So having that shared strategic vision towards what we're all achieving is a thing that is the glue, really, that holds our partnership together, particularly at a community level. Um, and really the trust factor in working with partners, I think that's been really interesting learning for us in the last couple of years, in particular working with City of Culture, that actually, you know, we all trust each other in our expert areas. 
Um, we all understand this is the role that I play in this partnership. Um, and then um, together, you know, we achieve great things in trusting people to, to share their professional expertise. The reach that we have through our partnerships is just incredible. Um, you know, how we cascade our messaging through various networks at the touch of a button through social media and sharing, you know, sharing each other's news um, and, and good news through, through social media has just been an incredible power um, to reach and engage more people right across the city and region. And of course, it enables us as a team to optimise our time and resources across investment, time, training and skills. I've got an example to share about training and skills in just a moment. Um, but finally, I wanted to just remind everybody that, you know, it's much more fun working with a larger team um, with experts in their fields. It makes it for a much richer and enjoyable experience. Um, so working in partnership is, has just been incredible uh, for motivating and retaining staff. So a couple of um, really uh, grassroots examples of, of how we work at quite a small, in a small way, but across our sites, but you know, could very easily be replicated. Uh, and these projects have just been going down really well. There's been a great appetite for them. Um, so through Coventry City Council's Mental Health Service, the Pardon Food Union, uh, we worked with them to train a group of volunteers over an 18-month period um, so that they eventually step up and become leads themselves, sharing their expertise with our other wider volunteer teams. And what that simply meant is literally building and growing um, from raised beds in Charterhouse Ward Garden. Um, but I think it's another good example of how we may have these high-level partnerships and strategic partnerships with Coventry City Council, but through uh, across different departments, we're working in different ways with different teams. Um, so this has been really inspiring for the team. There's been fantastic skills transferal. At the end of the two years, we now have six people who are going on to, to we're growing capacity around that. Um, and we've also been having some fantastic hospitality events in which all of that food and food um, gets shared both uh, with our funders and stakeholders. But equally, you know, we have we've invited food banks to the table with us and various community groups have been able to extend our reach. So that's been self-sustaining. Um, I mentioned previously about Warwickshire Wildlife Trust. This is just a little example of, of how we uh, work with partners to really tap into their expert knowledge. Um, so the wider Heritage Park, as I mentioned, has the river running through it. Um, we've been able to extend that partnership and invite Warwickshire Wildlife Trust to look at biodiversity across the whole site and make suggestions for improvements to nature, for improvements for biodiversity, etc. And they are now leading on a new wetland development um, for the site, which we, um, which they're working very closely with our community groups and friends groups to to make happen. Um, they've been leading our volunteer sessions on a monthly basis, as I mentioned previously. Um, and collectively, you know, we support each other's fundraising efforts. Uh, we're signposting, as I said, um, and it's just been an excellent partnership, really, which we look forward to developing long term. We have another partnership with National Trust. This is almost like our park is kind of split into pockets of partnerships, actually. Um, but this is another really exciting one, which is quite new. Um, so um, we're, this is part of a national project to plant more trees. But um, together, they've brought all of the stakeholders um, together on our site, including two schools. Uh, and I think this is really, really exciting um, that the education element of, of what we're doing comes in. Um, so over a series of six consultation sessions we have invited school children on various tours of the site to share their they've been sharing their experience of the site with us how they use it where they might see a future garden in the future and together collectively in fact tomorrow uh, they're beginning to plant um, in the local in the um, in the area of the blossom garden and they're now designing and planning the future um, natural play area attached to the blossom garden in the future so Obviously, working so closely alongside the National Trust is also great profile for us to directly reach potential visitors to our heritage sites in the city. So uh, invaluable, really. Um, also a way for us to tr fast track into that um, expert knowledge and uh, within, within a national organisation of that scale. 
we're literally able just to ask for their templates. Um, who do you recommend for X, Y, Z? And we very, very quickly fast track ourselves. So the learning, um, finally, um, we, we, with so many diverse partnerships, we're just learning all the time. Um, and that's never going to stop. We're always going to be evolving. Things are always going to be changing. And we're always just going to be agile and responsive in our partnerships. And I think that's the main conclusion that we've come to in the last two years, that we just, yes, we need the frameworks. Yes, we need a strong understanding around what our objectives are and how we're going to get there. But equally, we need space to be organic within that. We need space to be able to evaluate what's working, what isn't. How do we shift it? We need... Um, tolerance when things do not go right and just be have the confidence to, to say, oh, that's okay, we're just doing it this way, we're moving through this way uh, and develop. Um, so I'd say it takes time, build a strong foundation, um, but you know, then build momentum. Trust, respect and adapt to each other's ways of working. That might mean you have to adapt more to others, but it's worth it for the value of the partnership. Um, invest in the partnership um, yeah, I love the fact that although we're a charity of eight, really our team is probably about 200 people across Coventry. Um, plan, 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 but not everything will go right. Leave space to evaluate, be dynamic and responsive in partnerships. Um, share the problems, but don't forget to share the successes as well. Sometimes I sit with our partners and we go, hang on a minute, look what we just achieved in the last six months together. So just leaving really on that note to um, say... Don't forget, as working in partnership, you've probably achieved something in record time. Thank you.